X33 is a body weight workout with three main goals. We're gonna master the body weight training basics. We're gonna boost mobility and metabolism and improve stamina and endurance. This, by the way, is also one of my all-time favorite 20 minute full body mobility workouts where we're working on the squat and the push-up mechanics all in one. You get the muscle work, but most importantly, you get that good full range of motion joint work for longevity. I'm gonna break down each movement. You're done in 20 minutes. Let's get into it. The down dog to push-up ladder is where mobility meets muscle gain. Now, before I get into the actual flow here, couple options. Slam boards, you can obviously do this on the floor, but the slam boards will enhance the stretch and or help overcome some wrist mobility issues and extend the range of motion on the push-up portion of the exercise for better chest work. Now, advanced would be fingers elevated, more wrist mobility. You have wrist mobility issues and you wanna work around, you elevate the heel of the hand. So both ways, we get that extended stretch and more range of motion on the push-up portion of the exercise. We can also really go joint friendly with an elevated push-up handle set up like this. So that's just gonna really allow you to get better positioning and or if it's too tough on the floor, you can work with that. But let me show this guy. The whole focus here is inhale back, exhale forward, legs are straight. And this will also work in the sense that the closer your arms and legs are together, the more challenging it will be overall because of the increased stretch. So maybe start about shoulder width for the arms and maybe just about hip width or outside of that for the legs. What I'm gonna do is inhale back and try to work the heels flat, keeping the legs straight. And again, working to not just get here, but push away so I get that moving through the upper mid back area. All right, I'm gonna exhale forward, then inhale down, all the way to the ground there, and then push up. That's one. Inhale back, really push it out. Then I do two. And then I'll do in three. Now, by the way, this is not a race. Obviously you wanna climb the ladder as high as you can, but I personally like to do this slow. So here's three reps coming. And just really own it, feel it, make it more of a muscle building versus kind of cardio metabolic effect, going as fast as possible and then continuing in that fashion. So you could also start slower and then speed the reps up or just mix it up from workout to workout. But again, what I liked about going slow like that, by the time I get to five on this ladder, those five reps are feeling like I've got, I'm doing like a single arm push up almost in terms of the load from the accumulating fatigue but again, we get some relief in the stretch position without allowing the contractions to leave. So we keep the body under tension, but we get to an active stretch, then right back into a more challenging work position on the push-up. Great way to start a workout, great way to end a workout. Great thing to do anytime, anywhere to open up the entire body, shoulders, hips, activate the core, and obviously work them titties. Heels elevated skier squat mobility. We elevate the heels to allow us to get more range of motion with the hip and the knee bypass some ankle mobility issues, especially because it's tough to get that motion when the feet are really close together. But this is that skier position, right? And what we'll do is really stress the low quads. We start extended. And again, this is a long set. And by mobility, I mean, you're gonna try to get a little more range of motion every repetition, inhale down, breath holding the pause, exhale back up smooth, and try to keep your trunk as upright as you can. Really make sure your toes, your big toe in particular is down and active. Here we go. Get about right there. Maybe that's where I kind of feel, okay, maybe I'll stop. Now, while you're there, when you stop, when you feel like maybe I have to go a little bit too far, it could stress the knees a bit, or I start to hinge, you pause and now you isometrically create tension around it. Push your toes down, grip the grippers, okay? And try to get active there to turn in all the muscles around the knee for stability. Create the tension isometrically and we'll build strength not only there, but 15 degrees above and below. <sighs> Exhale through, squeeze the hell out of those quads. And then the next rep, try to get a little bit lower. You really start to feel those low quads kick in. Own it. <sighs> Pay attention between imbalances between sides. Come forward this way for a second. If you notice, you're kind of prone to kick into one side versus the other. We're just tracking these knees directly over the big toe and the second and third uh, toe as well. So. Try to get down as low as you can. And by the way, it, it's mostly a knee drive, but we can get a little hip sync too. But the key is getting upright. That's what's gonna really stress the low quads. And this is really just about building a lot of resilience in the knees, okay? And coming through. So this gets, you know, the first couple reps are like, oh, this is a waste of my time. No, it's not. 
and especially as time accumulates, getting you more comfortable with that close stand squatting. Uh, again, super key knee bulletproofing. And again, we want to blow these guys up. The more developed these are, the safer these will be. And also, you're just going to look tremendous in your shorts, your thong, all your most intimate apparel. The alternating leg down dog is really going to increase the stability demands for both the shoulders and the hips, a little more quad or thigh contribution as well, but we really do increase the stretch on the hips and hamstrings one leg at a time. So here's what it looks like. We're gonna alternate legs just to kind of uh, minimize the fatigue and just accumulate the stretch with the extended work period here. So I get locked in and I'm gonna start by, if you want, you can do a, a, a push-up, one-legged push-up. And then the key in this position, don't just get here. You gotta actively dig that toe into the ground and squeeze the quad. Now, I'll then push back and try to drive this heel up, and I'm gonna feel incredible hamstring, calf, Achilles stretch all the way through here, and then really push back, try to get that, that glute into full extension. Then, exhale through, making sure we're pushing away so we get enough space to really get all the way through for the hip flexors. Then I'll come back here. I'm just gonna switch sides and repeat. You can skip the push up if you need to, and then pay attention. This is my tighter side, so I'll, I'll spend even like a little bit more time, even do some pumps if needed, just to really open it up and flatten out. Come back, switch and repeat for time, okay? More wrist stretch here, wrist problems, you can go here. You can use the push-up bars. You can also elevate in a box or bench as needed to modify too. But this is gonna catch you quick. Enjoy! Now, the wider your stance when you squat, the more naturally you have to kind of toe out, which is okay. But one thing we're gonna to try to do by using the heel elevated sumo position, which is what we're working here, which by the way, really stretches the adductors and groin. One of the biggest contributors of low back pain is tight adductors or groin. It's not just gonna ruin your weekend, it's gonna cause back pain. So we get set up and I want you to use these and get your toes completely forward. Keep in mind, the heel elevated is gonna allow you to get a little bit lower than you would otherwise. It makes the toe forward version much more palatable to your body, but also, um, you know, it, it's gonna be tough to get down super low when the feet are wide and toes directly forward. That's part of what I'm trying to work here. So what we're gonna do is, you're gonna kind of, and you can use the hands here or elbows here for assistance. You're gonna kind of squat down. And, and what you're gonna do here too, what I like about either here or here, however you wanna do it, I can use my arms slash forearms to kind of push my chest up and my shoulders up. But what I'll do is I'll get here and I'm gonna to try to actively keep tension down and then I'm going to go from that kind of squat to kind of a hinge, all right? Legs as straight as I can, I can kind of wiggle them. I can go side to side, all right? Inhale back, and while I'm here too, I can do a little adductor work one leg at a time. I can also kind of work between more of that hinge shape and more of that upright shape or even kind of work my my sumo wrestler, even like lineman in football, American football, all right, position. And I'm just gonna go back and forth and I'm trying to just keep getting more and more range of motion, ideally getting palms flat with the legs straight. And then every time I come back here, I'm just really trying to get lower and lower and I can even do a little bit of a, a pulse or a bounce. Just make sure to keep mixing those smooth inhales and exhales, all right, and just play around and eventually when you get back on the floor, you're gonna feel like it's gonna just feel smooth and natural to you so you can stay low on the final exercise of this workout. Get ready for some insane shoulder and core work, mastery of the single arm plank, but also prep for you know what it is, the single arm push-up. We go slam boards or we can go this guy. Again, consider if needed elevating your hand as much as needed. This is a very tough training angle. Uh, this guy is great because it keeps you in a neutral position. I'll show that option as we go. But either we go advanced, fingers elevated, or modified, heel of hand elevated. The slant boards we'll use as well. I just I find I get better positioning overall, and it gives me kind of a nice target to work with. So a little wider stance than normal for extra stability as we go to one side. What I'm going to do is start in two-arm plank, put one arm behind my lower back to also not only feel my lower back position. I don't, I don't want to feel movement here. I don't want to feel rounding here, but I also get stretch to the chest and interior, anterior shoulder compartment. So we're here, get it locked in, 
Inhale back, push all the way back. All right? You could if you wanted to even kind of add a reach, but let's just show this. And then I exhale forward. And if you have the ability to do so, keeping the arm completely straight. Scat push up. And then switch sides. By switching, because it's so hard to do this for extended time, by breaking up one arm at a time, we can stay in motion and let the other side rest. And keep it really a, a high-end strength exercise while also tying in stamina and endurance and again that big stretch of the hips, hamstrings, and shoulders. Now, if you feel pain in the shoulder or your wrist can't take it, again, doing this guy, I get that slight elevation to unload my body weight a bit. I get a little more control as I come back to the stretch and then it's also much easier to the scat portion of the exercise. So this one is a staple and it just the flow on this, God, the, the mobility flow in this workout is, it's divine, okay? It's straight from Mount Metabolism where the Metabolic Messiah originated as a droplet of sweat from space. Next movement is next. Nobody has bigger legs than linemen, rugby players, and sumo wrestlers, okay? The sumo squat walk, now a lot of you are like, I'm not really going for that particular look. That's fine, that's mostly diet, and also these are just big, big, big people. These are beasts, these are large creatures, okay? You're not that, don't worry about it. Just keep your diet in check, all right, it'll be good. But we're gonna get the lower body development, also the mobility gains. And in American football, in any sort of wrestling or combat sport, uh, where there's grappling involved, the low man or low woman or low person, okay, pronoun, pronouns matter, uh, wins. So what we do is we get our wide stance. Now, try to get your toes as forward as you can. They can go out a little bit, but I wanna get wide. And what I want you to do is get down, sit into it. And by the way, we've mobilized everything to this point now where you should be able to get really low comfortably. Doing this cold is tough. It also can be a little bit stressful on the knees, but now we've got blood everywhere. We've taken our joints to range of motion and I can go hands here for assistance or here, or I can kind of just have my hands ready like I'm about to push off. But we're gonna do a kind of mix between inhale and exhale on each step while staying low. So imagine you're in a tiny house. I don't want you going like this up and down. I want you to stay low as we do it. Extended time, here we go. Now, if you have the space, you can keep going, but ideally in small spaces, you're just gonna turn, drop back down and return. Again, try to, as you kind of stretch into it, you can rest and kind of pulse and kind of own it. You'll notice how I'm just going pretty much toe to heel, all right? And I wanna keep, I don't wanna be rounded here, all right? I'm trying to keep my shoulders higher than the hips in a nice flat back position, and I'm just keeping both feet flat as I do it. So, it's gonna be such a test of stamina and endurance. Uh, you know, and again, you have a lot more general mix of both fast and slow twitch fibers. You have a lot more of these aerobic endurance fibers, oxid oxidative fibers in your lower body. So it really becomes a mind game, especially at the end of a workout. But the flow was set up, so we really mobilize ankles, knees, hips, all right? Get our good positioning locked in, use our unique training tools to help uh, you know, it, it takes some angles, unique angles mobility-wise that makes it so when you get feet on the ground, we're in the best positions possible. So I love this as a finisher. Take your time. When you have to start higher, you can, or if you have to fatigue, you can go a little bit here. But the goal is you want to get low and you want to stay low, okay? It's very sexy. I really hope you enjoy this one. I'd also bookmark or save this one in the archives for yourself because, again, anytime you're traveling, and you need like a really awesome hotel room session to start there that's not too intense, but that's also gonna energize you, make you feel good for the rest of the day, or even use it at the end of a long stressful work or travel day. Uh, you can, so it's hotel room travel friendly, but it's also just one of those workouts when you're having a shitty day, but you wanna move and feel good, this one is gonna allow you to do that. It's not gonna crush you, okay? But it is as hard as you make it. And it will be challenging, but in a way that will stimulate, not annihilate. So you're done in 20 minutes, Make your post worker report in the comment section below and your body's your barbell when Uncle Baby, the beast, shows you how to use it. Oh, bye.
go. Halfway. Rest.
halfway. Rest. Halfway.
rest. Halfway.
halfway. Rest. Halfway.
rest.